Hello and welcome to Lancet TV. I'm joined by Richard Horton, who's the editor-in-chief of The Lancet. Thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Now, The Lancet's just launched its series on stillbirth. Can you tell us a bit more about it? So this is a series about stillbirths. That's uh, deaths of babies at or after 24 weeks of pregnancy. Uh, this is one of the most neglected, marginalised, stigmatised issues in global health today. We simply don't talk about stillbirths. And what does this series actually consist of? So what we're trying to do here is to gather together the world's best information about the numbers of stillbirth deaths, where they occur, what we can do about them to prevent stillbirths and how we can implement those interventions right across the world to prevent literally millions of unnecessary deaths. And why has The Lancet given so much prominence to this issue now? You know, over the last 10 years, we've had a particular focus on maternal, newborn and child death. And we're part, I think, a small part, admittedly, of a global movement around women's and children's health, which has been fantastic. But there are still gaps in that movement. And one of the biggest gaps, not just in terms of numbers, but in terms of the sort of tragedies that hit families, are stillbirths. Now, sudden infant death syndrome is an issue that's grown in prominence around the world, yet there are 10 times more stillbirths. How can you explain the differing prominence that these two issues have had? So it's really weird the way the world chooses to take certain issues up and ignores other issues. And so it's absolutely right that sudden infant death syndrome is considered a serious problem by society, but it's utterly bizarre that although you have a stillbirth rate which is 10 times that of sudden infant death syndrome, we just don't talk about it. Politicians, health ministers, doctors, scientists, the public, the media, it's just not on anybody's agenda. And that is bizarre, but it's also wrong. And so what this series is trying to do is to change that dialogue, to put stillbirths right at the top of the agenda for maternal and child health. Now you said that you want to change that dialogue, but how do you hope that the series will be a catalyst for that? So we think this series can be a catalyst for change for two main reasons. First, because these data are fantastically reliable information to change the politics around women's and children's health. But also, and I think this is, a, this is a first for us, the stories that you hear from families, the tragedies of families who have experienced a stillbirth. Stillbirths matter to people. Stillbirths affect families. They leave a legacy of bereavement and desperation, messages which simply are not heard in the debates around health today. And what we've tried to do is to invite those families into the conversation around science and medicine and let their stories really tell us why this subject is important today. Well, Richard, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.